Thank. Um, you know, prosecutors need every piece of evidence that they can get in this case. Uh, we know they have not found the, the uh, Victoria's body. So, um, Bernarda, jailhouse informants, is that a sign of strength or weakness in the prosecution's case? So usually it's a sign of weakness because you really don't want to call a jailhouse informant unless you absolutely have to because people look so negatively upon confidential informants. They have something to gain. They want something out of this. They're not just coming out of their own free will and giving and out of their heart to come forward with this information. So for this jailhouse informant, what do you have to gain? What drove you to the table? What do you really want from this? Yeah, I mean, they're criminals. I mean, that's why they're CIs, no question, Vinny. But I was surprised at the defense here. They rolled over and they allowed this witness to testify in a non-public setting, which does not benefit the defense. This was a win for the prosecution. I'm surprised they agreed to this. Every trial here in the United States is public. There's no reason this particular witness should have been able to testify in secret. But I don't think the defense rolled over because the defense got to see this confidential informant, this jailhouse snitch in person. They were able to confront this person. So the defendant was able to exercise his constitutional right to confront any witness that's appearing. But Bernard, this witness, this witness wouldn't have testified. This witness would not have testified if he or she had to testify publicly. By the defense so stipulating the to this, we, that's we don't the know only that. reason the prosecution was allowed to. Well, we don't I mean, know that. And I think. I well, think obviously it was a he score asked for it, and he demanded it. <laughs> Go ahead, Imran. I think, I, think, I think it was a score for the defense, because you know you have problems when the prosecution is really resting their largely circumstantial, if not all, circumstantial case on jailhouse informants. You heard Chanley saying that there may be one uh, again tomorrow. I think reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt. This is going towards the defense side. I may be proven wrong, but that's how I'm calling it now. Uh, All right, who are you going to believe more? Right let, let me ask you a question here. Who, who are you going to believe more, jailhouse informant or his ex-wife? I'm going with the ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the ex-wife. Hey, 16 years of prosecution, I am going with the ex-wife on this one. <laughs> All right, I want to play. I mean, I like the ex-wife more than the criminal, I, that's for yeah, sure. But. I, I want to play for you um, because the other issue in this case is how exactly did she die? The defense is sort of... Uh, indicating that suicide is a reasonable possibility here. Well, Victoria's uh, psychiatrist testified today. Let's take a listen. So then approximately you would have seen uh, and been Victoria's psychiatrist for about five years? And that's right. Okay. Um, when you uh, would meet um, with Victoria, would you meet with her one-on-one? Uh, -on -one? That's right. Uh, were there times when uh, other individuals were in your counseling sessions? I cannot remember that. Okay. From what you remember, uh, again, this is some time ago, uh, it was mostly you seeing Victoria alone? Yes. Okay. Um, and you, I guess in the course of your treatment, um, what were your, uh, I guess, impressions of, of Victoria? Well, the information I'm going to say right now is basically based on refreshed memories from reading the records. I personally have a very uh, fragmented memory of that. So um, the, the memories that I see here recorded is, is Victoria is a vulnerable person who has struggled during a childhood with multiple traumas um, and which has lasted with her uh, for a long time until I saw her and affected her significantly. She also struggled with mental illness and uh, profoundly was the anxiety problem um, and uh, the other ones included uh, tension and, and um, a mood disorder. Um. And, and doctor, we, we noted, a, I guess, a few specific um, counseling dates and, and we talked about the, the findings uh, or your, your conclusions with respect to uh, any suicidal ideation she may have had on a, on a given date. Um, based upon your recollection and your review of the records, it's your testimony that you never thought of Victoria as a suicidal person? Um, I never thought of her and as an immediate suicide risk. I never really thought of that at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest. You know, I'm a former prosecutor, but I'm a little worried about the prosecution here, Nima. I've got jailhouse informants, 
an ex-wife who may have an axe to grind, just maybe, just guessing, right? Um, and my psychiatrist has a fragmented memory. I mean, are we in trouble here? I like this case for the prosecution, Vinny. I mean, everyone tells a story, and the defense's story doesn't add up. They're pitching the suicide story where a woman can't walk, she can't use a computer, and then she disappears off the face of the earth, gone girl. At least the prosecution has a story for this jury. And, you know, Dr. Ahmed, yeah, maybe he didn't remember everything he should have, and maybe he hadn't seen her for almost a year, but he did a good job dirtying up Prokopovich, talking about how abusive he was, talking about how controlling he was. I think there's a lot for the jury to hang their hat on in this case. All right, folks, we're going to leave it right there. Um, you guys are going to stay. 